Today we will look at something very cool, the Waveshare ESP32 S3 Geek Development Board. You can carry this with you just like a normal USB flash drive and whenever you want just connect it to your laptop or PC and you will be able to control anything locally or from anywhere in the world and at the very same time monitor all kinds of sensors too. And all this is possible due to its onboard ESP32 S3 R2 chip with Extensa 32-bit LX7 dual-core processor capable of running at 240 MHz. Built in 512 KB SRAM, 384 KB ROM, 2 MB of on-chip PS RAM, and onboard 16 MB flash memory. USB-A port 1.14 inch 240 by 135 pixel 65K color IPS LCD display, a TFT card slot, a boot button, and other peripherals. It supports 2.4 GHz Wi Fi and PLE5, the onboard 3 pin UART, 3 pin GPIO, and 4 pin I2C interface headers, bringing more possibilities for your project. We will cover four examples. First, we will start with easy ones, but make sure to watch until the end because the last project is the most fun. Okay, check this out. We are going to use the ESP32 S3 Geek to wirelessly control a load connected to a completely separate ESP32 board. And that's not all. We will also be monitoring a sensor hooked up to that remote ESP32, streaming its value big and showing it live right here on the ESP32 S3 Geek's awesome display. So without any further delay, let's get started. Make sure you have a latest version of the Arduino IDE. Let's first start by installing the required libraries, TFT, ESPI, and one button. The libraries are installed and now we can start with the programming. For this, you need to go to the products wiki page. In the resource section, you can download the schematic for the ESP32 S3 Geek development board and the demo folder, which contains many examples. The third and fourth example codes are not included because I programmed them myself. Anyway, you can also download the data sheets. For basic examples, download the ESP32 S3 Geek demo. Inside the demo folder, go to the Arduino folder where you will find many examples. We will cover two examples from here while the other two are my custom codes. If we go to the LCD folder, we will find two more examples. We need to run both. So let's first check the LCD button example. See how quickly we got this up and running in just a few minutes. With the boot button, I can switch between images effortlessly. Now, let's dive into the next example. The purpose of this program is to display the time on the screen, updating every two seconds. This is my SSID and password, but you need to enter your own SSID and password. All right, so to make sure my ESP32 gets the accurate time, first I need to tell it where to find it on the internet. For that, I'm using poll.ntp.org, which is a standard address for network time protocol servers. That's what this NTP server line sets up. Now, the time we get from the internet is usually standard UTC time, but I want the display to show the local time for Pakistan, which is five hours ahead. So, I need to tell the system that offsets in seconds, 5 hours work out to 18,000 seconds, which is the value I have assigned to UTC offset in seconds. Lastly, since Pakistan does not currently observe daylight saving time, I have set the daylight offset second to zero, ensuring the time doesn't automatically adjust for summer hours. Let's go ahead and upload this program.
As you can see, the time updates every two seconds. Now, let's dive into the next example. Let's get hands on with ESP32 S3 Geek Development Board by connecting an I2C supported component to its I2C interface. Why not connect this I2C supported SSD 1306 OLED display module to the board? This way, we can print text on two displays at the same time. If you prefer, you can also connect a sensor instead of the OLED display module. The pins on the back are well labeled. Simply connect the OLED display modules VCC and ground to 3.3 volt and ground and connect its SCL and SDA to the ESP32 S3 Geek modules SCL and SDA pins. And that's it for the connections. The purpose of this program is not only to print the text electronic clinic on both displays, but also to send the status of the boot button to the SSD 1306 or LED display module. It's not necessary to just print simple text, you can also display sensor values. Anyway, released means boot button hasn't been pressed. But if I press the boot button, its status will change from released to pressed. Isn't that amazing? Now, let's move on to our fourth and final example, which is actually a practical project in itself. If you have already worked with ESP32, this project will feel like an intermediate level task. However, if it's your first time using ESP32, it might feel a bit complex, but don't worry, I will explain everything step by step. For this project, you will also need one more ESP32 module. It can be any variant of the ESP32, such as the ESP32 S3, ESP32 C3, or even the simple ESP32 dev module like the one I'm using. As usual, I'll be using my designed ESP32 development board for which I have already made a video. However, if you prefer, you can also make the same connections on a breadboard. This development board already has a 5 volt SPDT type relay and female headers, so I don't need extra wiring. I just need to connect one sensor or multiple sensors to display their values on the ESP32 S3 Geek development board. As you can see, I have connected a potentiometer to the ESP32 dev module, which I will use as a sensor. The left and rightmost legs of the potentiometer are connected to 3.3 volt and ground, and the middle leg is connected to GPIO 34. The relay is connected to GPIO 13. For the relay connections, you can follow this circuit diagram. On the ESP32 S3 Geek side, you don't need to do anything except upload the program. So we will upload this program to the ESP32 S3 Geek development board and this program to the ESP32 dev module which is connected to the relay and sensor. For the practical demonstration, I have also connected a 220 volt AC bulb to the relay which we will control in just a few seconds. Please never touch the relay contacts when the 220 volt AC supply is connected. As a safety precaution, always wear protective gloves and conduct high voltage experiments in the presence of someone knowledgeable about the safety rules and regulations. Both development boards are connected to Wi-Fi networks. Now let's control this light using the ESP32 S3 Geek development board. Simply hold the boot button for a short duration to turn the light on and off. You can replace this light with any load you wish. And if you want to control high MPI loads, just increase the relay size. Now, if I start rotating the potentiometer's knob, the value on the display will change. I've used the potentiometer because it's easily available everywhere. However, you can use any other sensor if you prefer. This is a complete two-way communication system. We are sending commands from the ESP32 S3 Geek development board to control the relay while simultaneously monitoring the potentiometer's value. It's not just limited to being used with a laptop, you can also use it with a cell phone charger or any other 5 volt power supply. Honestly, the ESP32 S3 Geek development board has truly impressed me and I'm planning to use it in a high level security project soon. So, that's all for now. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in the next episode and thanks for watching.